Right, let's move to your uh, dispute with the CFMEU. Uh, you're in court as we speak uh, in Melbourne. You, you say it's a distraction for management, uh, but it's going to cost the company, or is costing the company currently, a lot of money. For the last two and a half years, we've had the impact of the, the black ban on Boral in the Melbourne CBD. Uh, it's taken two and a half years to finally get our day in court for a trial on our damages, and that's what's going on this week. Because that's a black ban that, of course, the unions deny. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is that uh, in this legal proceeding, they, they can't uh, they can't so easily say that. In this legal proceeding, they've already, by their failure to show up for the the, con the, uh, the injunction hearings, have had admitted or deemed to have admitted that this black ban is going on. Uh, but there's many more uh, uh, pieces of litigation going on involving the CFMU over these similar sets of facts. So the ACCC has an investigation and has levied charges against the, uh, the CFMU for this black ban in, in Melbourne. And then there's the criminal charges, which uh, have been referred by the Royal Commission, which still have been acted on. So we're now two and a half years into this process, and it's only just beginning to show up in the legal arena. From the union's point of view, now they, they settled with Grocon uh, and had to pay, I think, about $3.55 million. A report at the time in June quoted one union source as being very concerned with the situation. Even that fee, that fine would take uh, membership fees of 9,000 members six months to cover and, and that there was concern about a $28 million action from Borough. What, what would you say to the rank and file union members? I think it's an absolute travesty that the leaders of their union have put them in a situation where their money See, the, the leaders of the union are using other people's money to pay for their misdeeds. And that is a problem in our legal system. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed when the Royal Commission comes out with its final recommendations is to how to fix the construction markets in this country in terms of industrial relations. Equally, our Royal Commission is now tarnished. We've got uh, uh, Dyson Hayden, the commissioner, now ruling on union allegations of apprehended uh, bias due to um, being involved in, in a, a Liberal Party or invited to a Liberal Party function. Now, that is, the, that is a major distraction. That, that is a, an effort to get the conversation around whether or not he was going to attend something that he never attended, when in the meantime, we have all of this uh, blatant illegal and criminal activity going on in the construction markets. But did That's, you not put your head in your hands when you heard that? Uh, it's, 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 it's another in a long line of, of efforts to delay the inevitable. Borrell is not in this for the money. Borrell has had a good financial result. You saw the financial results for Borrell this year. Uh, we're not doing this for the money. We're doing this because we want to send a strong message that their conduct will not be tolerated. They want to also send a message, if they can get us to back down, that this is going to be the punishment for other companies who choose to stand up to them. So we're in a very interesting crossroads here in this society. Do you think government has done as much as it can do? I mean, I'm, I'm looking again at the original appointment of Dyson Hayden, uh, attempts now to get through the Senate, uh, the Building Commission uh, have failed again. I guess I have pretty low expectations of government and uh, based on my career uh, and they're fulfilling those expectations. You've got a broken system where the main construction union in this country is being run by a bunch of thugs and criminals. Mike Kane, I thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Techie.